This week we're going to take a step back and we're going to look at my first guitar pedal build. So I'm easily into my third year of effects pedal building. Not exactly sure when I started actually building them, but when I got interest was probably back in like 2010. Uh, the first pedal that I wanted to build that I actually sought after was this one here, which is the uh, Barefoot or BFJ, uh, BJF Dynared uh, distortion pedal. I did lots of research back then and I really wanted to get a good distortion pedal something that maybe some other folks didn't have. And I did some YouTubing and this is the one that I liked the most. Uh, I came to find out that it cost about $300 at the time. So I went down the route of seeing if I could build it. I was in electrical engineering and I said, you know, this is just easy electronic stuff. I'm sure I can do it as long as it's all analog. I was able to find a schematic at that time, uh, went ahead and ordered most of the parts, didn't really know what to order in the way of, you know, what capacitors work best, uh, you know, what a good pot was compared to a bad pot, but I had some idea of how to put it together and uh, ordered all those parts. It then sat on my uh, office desk for probably the better part of six months before I just decided I wasn't going to put it together and uh, set it aside until about three years ago. So about three years ago, I decided that, you know, I've got a little bit of extra time on my hands. I really want to go ahead and build one of these pedals. Um, at that time, I had most of the stuff needed. You know, I, I had acquired a drill press to, to drill out the case. I'd already bought all the components. It was really just sitting there and needed to uh, be put together. Now, when I first looked at these, there was no site like tag board effects or uh, you know pedal PCB or really wow where I could just order it. I had to actually lay it out myself. Luckily by the time I came around to building it I was able to find uh, a layout on perf board uh, on tag board effects and that's what I used to build this out. Uh, it was a pretty easy process you know if you if you're new at, at pedals you know you'll probably know this there's a little bit of a learning curve especially if you've never soldered before I had a little bit of experience with that. But for the most part, you know, it, it just take your time and I was, you know, I was able to build it out. A little bit about this circuit, it's, it's really a, a very simplistic distortion pedal um, after seeing many now over the last three years. Uh, it uses a CA3130 uh, op amp package. Um, it's in a non-inverting configuration. There's only one amplifier in the whole um, build and it has clipping diodes both in the feedback loop of the non-inverting op amp and also to ground at the output. So really it's going to go in, it's going to get clipped in the feedback, clipped at the output. Uh, you have your distortion which is also uh, just varying the, the level of feedback or the gain I guess in your op amp. And uh, yeah, uh, it's, it's very simple. There's a buffer on the end, it's just using a little FET buffer. And uh, that's pretty much it. The tone, I'll say, is not really a, a bass to treble. It's really just a treble cut knob. A few other things about this build. You can see I built it into a, a 125B case. At the time, I didn't really know that there was any different size cases. Like I said, this is back 2012. I don't think there was a ton of people making DIY pedals back then, or at least the community wasn't as large. I didn't know that you could order different sizes, etc. So, you know, this looked like the, the most uh, similar in size to, I think, a, a boss pedal that I had at the time. So, you know, I thought everything would fit in here. I actually had anticipated drilling this out for a battery as well and bought a, a cool 9-volt battery enclosure that I was going to mount in there. It didn't really come to fruition. I actually don't put batteries in any, any of my pedals now. So um, this one doesn't have one, and I haven't put one in since. As for the deco and the enclosure, I'm pretty much using the same process now as I did back when I built this. Uh, I have my Avery Clear label that I've printed my, uh, my decal on. And at the time, I hadn't got to white petals yet, so I uh, painted this in, um, in a, a poster red color and then just a, a standard lacquer. Now, you can see in some spots that, you know, it's already starting to uh, chip away. I don't think the the lacquer is the best one that I had used at the time here, uh, as well as, you know, it's three years old, so it's going to get some chips. No big deal. So I haven't been in this pedal case for a while, and for this video, I really wanted to take a look to just kind of see some of the things I've changed in my process over the years. Um, 
definitely, uh, definitely some things I've already noticed, but uh, let's take a look inside and I'll expand on them. So actually before I go inside, the first thing I wanna show you is how I mounted the LED. You can't, I guess you can see it there. I mounted it from the outside in, uh, which is definitely the wrong way to do it. It's funny that I've never gone back and fixed that. Anybody could just go and, and break this LED off, especially when you're stomping on it, but it's held up for the last three years. So I'll probably leave it as is. I'm probably not gonna touch anything on this pedal to tell you the truth. You know, it's worked up till now. So, you know, it is what it is. So the first thing I notice when I open the pedal is how I've got the board mounted in. Uh, you can see I've got it so my, um, my uh, tracks are actually pointing down towards the case, which you can also see that's why I coated the bottom of the case with electric tape. I, I take it that's because they were shorting out when I uh, closed up the enclosure. So definitely something I've changed over the years. Now I, I've got these turned around and mounted. I think the reason I did it back then was because I, I wanted all the off-board wiring in there and then just to drop the board on and solder those quick connections. Um, obviously now I do the uh, all my pots and stuff uh, separately outside of the box and then um, just wire to my switch and drop everything in. So a little bit easier to do now and uh, yeah, just easier overall. So pulling this out, you know, I, the first thing I can say is look how much wires in there. Uh, you know, that's quite a bit for, uh, you know, a small board like this. Um, you can kind of see in here as well. Also, none of my wire is really color coded. I see a couple blacks in there, maybe for ground, but for the most part, it's just red and white. Uh, definitely something I've changed over the years. You know, red is for your nine volts. I use uh, white or green for my input, yellow for my output, and obviously black for my ground. This is also back before I used my uh, three pole double throw uh, switching PCBs that I order from either RuluWow or Pedal PCB. So this is all hand wired on the three pole double throw switch. Uh, I could still do it this way. It just saves a lot of time to, to do it the other way. And also you don't have to worry about shorts as much. As for the audio jacks, um, you know, these are pretty good quality audio jacks, I'll say. I, I must have lucked out when I bought them years ago. Um, no complaints. I would probably still use something very similar to these in, uh, in today's builds. One thing I notice is my placement of my 9 volt adapter. Uh, as you can see, I have it mounted at the top here beside my... Um, Let's see if I can get it beside my pots. Uh, all my builds now, I actually mount them down here because look at how much empty space is down here. Uh, moving that down there gives you more room for your board to rest and really just uh, makes it, everything can go in tighter. And as you can see by the real estate in here, this is uh, not a lot going on in this 125B case. It can go into probably something smaller. Uh, if we look at how I've wired my uh, current limiting resistor, probably not something I would choose to do. Just bare wire uh, attached to my LED. Um, yeah, something I definitely don't do now, especially with the use of the three-pole double throw uh, PCB boards. The potentiometers. So you can see the potentiometers here. Definitely have upgraded those over the years. Um, you know, now I've used the plastic backs. These are some pretty cheap alpha pots. You know, I'm not surprised that I had those back then. I didn't really know what was good or bad, and I was a student at the time, so, you know, probably ordered what was cheapest. Um, I also, you know, have soldered right to some of the uh, the leads of the potentiometers. Now I'll use, um, you know, a piece of perf board to mount those, and that way I'm not applying heat directly to the pot because I've burnt out many potentiometers, especially on this one, uh, because of doing that. Lastly, just looking at the board, um, I'm pretty happy with the solder, uh, soldering on this. A couple spots, maybe I could have done a little bit better, but I had a little bit of experience at the time and I wasn't too worried about it. Um, it's on perf board, which you know is, is pretty common for me to use on any kind of build off tag board. Um, the other thing that I should point out is, uh, well, two things, I guess. One is I don't have my uh, 3130 chip or op amp chip um, socketed, it's soldered right to the board. So that's something I've definitely changed. Now, every time I have an eight pin or 16 pin or 14 pin, I definitely socket it. And, uh, the other thing is you can see all my capacitors in here are ceramic disc capacitors. So that's definitely something I've changed. 
I should say all my all my uh, non-polarized capacitors are ceramic disc capacitors. I now use uh, you know metal metal box capacitors, mylar film capacitors, stuff that's a little bit better for those higher uh, capacitance values. Really, just use the uh, the smaller ceramic disc ones now for um, you know the really small picofarad level capacitance. So I'm going to close this up and I'm going to plug it in and give you guys some sounds. But something that I thought was maybe a little bit more interesting than just, you know, showing you what this distortion pedal sounds like is maybe comparing it to what I could do when building this pedal now. So over the last uh, week or so, I've been building many pedals, and one of which was a remake of my first ever effects pedal. So, you know, without further ado, I guess, I'll show you this guy here, which is the Red 2. And really, it's the exact same pedal as this one. A couple minor changes, obviously, um, you know, all the upgraded components, my upgraded pots, you know, my upgraded capacitors. It's using the switching board here in the back. And really, other than that, they're the exact same pedal. Um, the only real difference is uh, this uses a, a CA3130EZ. This is just using a CA3130E. Not really a difference at all in the op amps. I think they're just different packaging. Uh, you know, maybe one's Canadian, one's American. Uh, the other thing is, um, what was the other thing? The other thing was the buffer. So this one uses a 5458 buffer at the output. This one uses a 5457. They're essentially the same thing, especially when you've got it configured as a buffer. So I really don't see that as a huge issue. Um, I guess if we're really nitpicking, my volume pot here is uh, a logarithmic and here it's a linear, but you know what? I'm going to crank the volume on, on both of them. So I don't think that's going to be an issue when comparing. So anyway, let's plug them in, see what they do. We'll see if, you know, three years of experience, uh, building pedals and maybe some upgraded components can make a difference in tone. So I hope you guys didn't mind me reminiscing about my first guitar pedal. I also hope you liked the comparison or head to head between, you know, something that was built with maybe subpar components three years ago versus three years of experience with better components. Uh, to me, I feel like I have two very similar pedals here. Um, most part, I think there's maybe a little bit more high end in this, a little bit more low end. You know, I'll let you guys be the judge from what you just heard. But for me, there's not too much difference. Um, 
really speaks a lot to you know components and you know how much does a little bit difference in capacitance or the type of capacitors that you use really make a difference i don't think it's huge um, i will say that durability i think this one will be working for much longer than this one you know i've already had some finicky moments with this just putting it back together after i opened it up you know I like this, the, the d design of this, it matches all my other pedals a little bit better, but this is always gonna, you know, be that first pedal for me. It's probably something that I'm not gonna change. I'm not gonna try to rebuild or fix too much. You know, I hope it works forever, but you know, I, I'm much more confident in this one working for a longer time. So with that, if you guys have any questions, comments, definitely hit me up below. Make sure to like, subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Thanks a lot.